now the constellation is developed okay the constellation tells us how the material response it tells us how the material response material response so basically we saw that the stress and strain are concepts introduced to lose the geometric dependence and constellation is a material dependent re relationship wherein you know that the steel responds differently from a rubber bar right. So, that material dependence is brought in by the constellation ok. In the constellation you, can, you have various class of constellation called as elastic constellation, plastic constellation, viscoelastic constellations and viscoplastic constellations depending upon how the stress, the a kinetic quantity and the strain, a kinematic quantity are related ok. The stress and strain can be related directly or stress stress rate, strain and strain rate can be related or there are different ways by which the relationship can be proposed. Depending upon that it will fall into the metal being either elastic or plastic or viscoelastic or viscoplastic. In this course we will be interested only in the elastic response of the material. So, let us understand what we mean by elastic ok. Elastic response. A textbook definition of elastic response is if I load a bar in uniaxial tension and let go the force it should come back to its original state right. If I pull a bar and let the force go it will come back to its original state that is a definition of an elastic response ok. That is if I pull a bar it elongates to this shape may be and when I let it go it comes back to its original shape ok. So, that is a definition of elastic response. In other words what you are saying here is there is no dissipation. Elastic response means there is no conversion of mechanical energy to thermal or other forms of energy ok. So, essentially what you are saying is the mechanical energy will be stored in the body as a mechanical energy and we release from the body as mechanical energy when you remove the load. This is called as no dissipation condition that is if I load a bar say this is the loading part if I unload it from here it will travel the same path again it will not want do this if the unloading is like this ok even though it reaches the same state this is not elastic, this is not elastic ok. The loading and unloading parts have to be the same, the shape should be preserved. So, all these are the attributes of an elastic response ok. Now, we will be interested only in this elastic response of the body and hence we will relate the stress directly as a function of the deformation gradient f ok. Since we are interested in only elastic response we will say that the stress is a function of the deformation gradient f ok. Now, what happens? Now, there are certain requirements of this constitutional relation.
one is it should satisfy second law of thermodynamics two is it should satisfy restriction due to objectivity. What does the second restriction mean is it does not matter whether you do an experiment in India or whether you do an experiment in America or whether you do an experiment on the surface of moon or you do an experiment on Mars, the consideration that you infer for a given material should be independent of where you do the experiment, okay. that is the restriction due to objectivity. Irrespective of where you do the experiment, the consolation for a given material will not change. Okay. In other words, what it means is when you place the body in the Euclidean space, each of us can place, place the body in a different region. Okay. This is a body, I can place it here, I can have my corner system oriented like this, oriented like this, oriented like this, it can be here, it can be there, anywhere it can be, but this body is constellation should not depend upon any of this placement of the position vector or how I represent the body and its surroundings in a Euclidean point space. Okay. So, that is what a restriction due to objectivity means. The restriction due to objectivity means anywhere you do the experiment the constellation of the body should be the same. Okay. So, based on this you will find that to satisfy these two restrictions you will find that the most general expression for the stress would be a equation of this form alpha 2 b inverse or alpha i is some function of trace of b, trace of b inverse and determinant of b. Okay. Now, b is f f transpose. Okay. This is called as the left Cauchy green deformation tensor. Okay. B is called as a left Cauchy green deformation tensor, it is F times F transpose, where F is the deformation gradient that we have seen before. Okay. Now, just like we computed C in terms of epsilon, the right Cauchy green deformation tensor, let us compute what is B in terms of the displacement gradient. You know that F is related to the displacement gradient as 1 plus H, this will be 1 plus H transpose, this is 1 plus H plus H transpose plus H h transpose again if this will be 1 plus 2 epsilon if components of h is of the order 10 power minus 3. What I have done? I have neglected this term h h transpose saying this is of order 10 power minus 6. So, I have neglected this and I have written this as 1 plus 2 epsilon. Okay. Similarly, I can find B inverse would be 1 minus 2 times epsilon. Okay. I will not go into a detailed derivation of this, B inverse would be this, then substituting these two expressions for B and B inverse in this expression for stress, what we will get is we will get sigma to be alpha naught plus alpha 1 minus alpha 2 times identity plus alpha 1 minus alpha 2 2 times epsilon. Okay. So, what you have done is uh, this alpha i is 
would be function of trace of b that will be 3 plus 2 times trace epsilon this will be 3 minus 2 times trace epsilon that is b inverse and determinant of b can be shown b 1 plus trace of epsilon okay this is nothing but determinant of b i am not interested in deriving this i am just interested to show you that how you obtain one of the consideration that will be using in this course or the only consideration that will be using this course that is Hooke's law okay so basically what you find from here is this alpha i is all functions of trace epsilon so alpha i is a function of trace of epsilon okay since we neglected higher order terms of the displacement gradient this alpha naught plus alpha 1 minus alpha 2 and alpha 1 minus alpha 2 cannot depend upon higher order terms of the epsilon so even though this is function of trace epsilon this can be at most mu i plus lambda i trace of epsilon it can be at most functions of this linear functions let us substitute that in here so what will I get I will get sum of linear functions so it will be mu i plus lambda i trace epsilon times identity plus 2 times let me say mu 0 lambda 0 uh, mu 1 plus lambda 1 trace of epsilon epsilon okay okay now what happens when this is the stress when strain is 0 what should be the stress the stress has to be 0 right when there is no strain the stress has to be 0 which will imply that mu 0 has to be 0 because trace of 0 is 0 these terms will vanish this and this entire term will vanish along mu 0 identity which, are, which means that mu 0 has to be 0 okay now then I have here I have here trace epsilon times epsilon that is a nonlinear terms it will have gradient of h components which are squared right because trace of epsilon is epsilon xx plus epsilon y y plus epsilon z z which is dou x by dou x plus dou y by dou y plus dou z by dou z okay this multiplied by epsilon trace epsilon multiplied by epsilon would be of order 10 power minus 6 okay since I ignore this order before I have to ignore these terms also okay. So you get finally the stress to be given by lambda naught trace epsilon identity plus 2 mu 1 epsilon okay I will drop this suffix I will drop this suffix and simply write sigma as lambda trace epsilon identity plus 2 mu epsilon where this lambda and mu are material parameters in particular is called as lame constant. okay so this is a constellation that we will be using in this course okay in the next class we will see how to estimate these mental parameters and then we will dwell more into these constellations so in this lecture we looked at the two remaining equations that we have not looked at till now the cost in this lecture we have looked at two equations that we have not looked till now the compatibility condition and the constellations okay in the previous lectures we looked at all the four concepts force displacement stress and strain and we looked at equilibrium equations and strain displacement relationship in this lecture we have looked at what compatibility conditions are and what the constellation is so this completes basically the four concepts and four equations that connect 
dome in mechanics used in mechanics okay thank you